MyFantasySportsTalk.com. And welcome back to another My Fantasy Podcast from MyFantasySportsTalk.com. It's fantasy football season, so we are back with more fantasy football knowledge that I'm going to have to soak up real soon. I've got the I've got the guide downloaded here. I've got about 17 tabs on my web browser pulled up studying all this fantasy football knowledge because our draft is this coming Sunday, uh, Sunday night. So I've got to step up. I've got one title. Dan took the crown last year, so I can't afford to have Dan talking all that trash for yet another calendar year. It's going to drive me crazy. I'm your host, Brandon Reed. My co-host is Daniel Schalk, our editor-in-chief. So what's the plan this year, man? Are you going to just take the title again and break hearts, or are you going to uh, take it easy on us? Listen, last year I didn't even put in half of the amount of work I've put in this year. Obviously, we brought out the MFST's first draft guide. Uh, The site is blowing up right now with fantasy information. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's it's obvious, guys. I mean, I I hate to – you know, burst your bubble before we even draft. But, but you've uh, also you know, been giving away a lot of what's in your head in this draft. Guy. True. Yeah, but, um, you know, <laughs> obviously we, we recorded a show not too long ago, Brandon, and you were – I mean, you mentioned Cole Beasley. So, obviously, not everything I'm saying isn't isn't penetrating uh, isn't penetrating through. So, I hope that uh, for the rest, of, the rest of the guys in our league. I'll be keeping a close eye on Michael Gallup for the rest of the year and see how that turns out for you. And it'll Uh, turn out you'll both be wrong, and I'll get Alan Hearns and he'll ball. uh, I mean, Alan Hearns is still the guy to grab. But anyway, you'll have to go back and listen to our last podcast, watch our last (laughs) podcast, and we answer the mailbag questions. Uh, That's up right now, the August mailbag question segment as we went into some fantasy football uh, based on you guys' questions. So we appreciate those and keep them coming. We'll answer as many as we can, as often as we can. But uh, that guy you just heard from is Ryan Thomas of the Thomas Take. You ready for Sunday? I was born ready. April 30th, 1992. I was born ready. How about that? April 30th. That was uh, that's that's uh man, that's it's hard of baseball season. I don't know. We ain't got no football going on right there, so I don't it's know. right during the it's right during draft weekend. What are you talking about? That is true. That is true. <laughs> that is true. You were a drafted baby. You I were a draft drafted baby. baby. <laughs> ready to start it all. Man. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm kind of scared. Now I'm kind of scared, Dan. <laughs> now that he puts it like that. I've been scared. Hey, Ryan was, I'll say this, Ryan was, if you if you will be humble enough to admit this and reflect back, Dan, that Ryan was pretty much at top of the standings all year, our first year, until yours truly right. knocked him out of the playoffs, bounced him unceremoniously yeah, about the championship. It was not a good, it was uh, not a good day. All I remember was something about losing a lot of games last year, drafting Adrian Peterson after I repeatedly said he's done. Um, that's 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 all that jogs my memory. He wasn't even one of my starters, though, until later in the year when everyone got hurt. Mm. It wasn't fair. So all the losses before I was for- that. At, that. at that point in the season, I was forced to start AP because there wasn't anybody left over. Mm. Mm. It was not pretty. Hey, and so, I don't think I actually drafted is, Eddie Lacy, Dan. I don't. I just. I was just talking, you know, just a little bit of chatter. Yeah, you know, I didn't actually do it. Good because he would have weighed down your bench too much. <laughs> hey, well, last year he was looking a little more fit, you know. I yeah. need depth. That's what I need. Depth. That's the goal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. We've made some changes in our fantasy league too. The rules went through, Dan. You're going to submit the rule. We have an IR spot now. What do we have? 30 two acquisitions. IR spots. Two, two IR, IR spots. spots. Okay, so we went from and zero one, to just, two. I foresaw complaining uh, during the NFL season, and I uh, just put it out of the way right now. So two IR spots, 30 moves. 30 moves are have, have gone through. It seems and like we made another. Yeah, go ahead. Commish. Uh, vetoes only, right. no votes. only. Yeah, I mean, I trust you, Dan. I, like I never, that. I never, not had any trust in you as the commissioner, Dan. 
but you should never, never, ever allow other owners to veto trades because they're all going to have their own interest. That is so, that is crazy. Imagine if the world really worked like that. Uh, I, mean, I was trying to be more Bill Clinton than Hitler. So this year I'm, <laughs> I'm going for it. <laughs> I, man, I don't care. I, the, what my my thing is, you don't veto any trade unless it's obvious, obviously lopsided. But that also, to me, that's if someone wants to make even what appears to be a lopsided trade in the first, you know, eight nine weeks, I don't care. That's up to you. But now, when you talk about people, you know, making lopsided trades to playoff teams uh, from people who are not in playoff teams, uh, then you have to look at you know collusion a little bit. But uh, as far as uh, you know, just two guys that think they, they're bettering their teams, no other owner should have a say in that at all, uh, period. So I think we've corrected that. Uh, and I trust your judgment, Dan. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I trust it, too. I trust it. I mean, having an IR spot is huge to me, uh, just yeah. that alone. Two spots, just for you. And then last year was also the only time I've ever played in a league. I don't think we did this the first year where you had an acquisition uh, limit. That no, no we had first, first, Yeah, we did the, the first year, and you expanded it because everybody hit their limit at like week eight, and it was like, what the hell, Dan? I mean, what is this? I didn't expect so many incompetent drafters. I mean, their teams were terrible. They had to do something. So. I mean, that's unfair, Dan. Everyone, even if you don't suffer injury, is, is watching every Sunday and saying, ooh, so-and-so went off or so-and-so got hurt, and the backup may be the guy. Guy. Everyone wants to get that guy on their team. Made so like they, eight moves last year and won the ship. Next. Well, good for you. You drafted really, really, I really well. About but the draft, I felt, the draft I should not be the end all be all. 365 days. The draft should lightning not be the end all be all. twice. <laughs> what? I said lightning doesn't strike twice. Oh. Well, uh, he nailed Kareem Hunt last year. He also – what was the other big running back you had that really kind of maybe outformed, outperformed expectations a little bit? I don't even remember. My team was just too stacked all, all <laughs> you, up You and really down. had a deadly one-two combination there at running back. Oh, really, I think I attacked Gurley. Really. No, Gurley, really. yes. Yes, bounce back year. There you go. So you, you pegged Todd Gurley to have a huge bounce back year, check, and you also pegged uh, Kareem Hunt to be the man, check. Uh, as he was through um, the first, you know, two thirds of the season, anyway. But, um, but yeah, way to go! So that won the ship. So I said that the draft is not the end all, be all, you know, but it kind of really is the start of the foundation. And so that's where we're all at now in fantasy football is making our drafts. If you've already drafted, I'm sorry, because if some of you potential Darius Geis owners out there drafted Darius Geis, then you're royally screwed at this point. So, uh, well, you probably didn't take him too high, but anyway, that's just, that's just what I'm trying to convey. The message I'm trying to uh, can uh, convey rather uh, is with these early draft is, uh, Say you draft David Johnson on Sunday, Dan, which you get the number one pick. I think you just might do, and he gets hurt again in the in the third in the third quarter of the third preseason game. You're screwed. You're screwed, Dan. Um, so not for these early drafts, but if we're faced with it, we got to do it anyway. So that's the point we're at, and we're going to do it Sunday, Dan. So um, I recommend it. You better have at least fourteen purchases from that draft guide from all fourteen guys in our league. I know that. Uh, I actually, I don't know if we do. I do not know, but uh, the draft guide is filled with a bunch of information. I'm glad some of them aren't using it uh, because that'll give us a leg up on the competition. 80 pages of, of just jam-packed stuff. Not only me uh, contributing to it with ranking, strength of schedule, some team previews, but you, Brandon, you you contributed. And and that uh, that Bill's, Bill's jersey-wearing guy, uh, Ryan Thomas, he even contributed to it. And I know when he comes on, he's just going to spit out Marcus Murphy. So uh, it was actually a good read. So um, if you if you do happen to, to want some draft. It was a great read. Great read, yes. Great. I was <laughs> so let me, enthralled. Let um, me ask you real quick before we get two sidetracks. I'm just really interested in your take on this. And you could chime in too, Dan, if you want to, if you're paying attention. But uh, so what is the quarterback outlook looking in Buffalo now? I mean, what is the what is the more favorable situation right now through one preseason game? Well, uh, Nate Peterman started the first preseason game and he went seven for eight. His last pass attempt uh, was kind of behind the receiver, but it still hit the receiver in the hands. You know, hit the receiver, went off his hands, interception. That was his last pass of the game. 
Um, AJ McCarron showed that he could lead the offense down the field. He definitely showed that he's the more experienced out of the three. And um, should be the starter. Methodically. Right. I mean, technically should be the starter based on, you know, you, you went out. Based on the fact that he's been, he's been, he's paid his dues. He sat behind Andy Dalton when there were moments where he, he probably could have made a case to start some weeks here and there when Dalton was struggling. Um, but they're really high on Nate Peterman. Uh, and they're really high, obviously, on Josh Allen. I But all gonna, the fans are like you, wearing what jersey you got on? Well, I know Josh Allen's the future. That's all. You know, you got to embrace the future. That, um, that puts A.J. McCarron and Nathan Peterman in a tough situation. I'll just let you know, as an outside perspective. Right, right. Well, AJ's, A.J. only signed on a two-year deal, and Nate Peterman was a backup last year. And as of now, you know, he's not a true starter. He just started the first preseason game. So the jury's still out, but it, five of the first seven games are on the road. Uh, I don't know if they're going to be willing to throw Josh Allen into that circumstance. I'd compare it to with uh, the Rams. They started Jared Goff week 11, his rookie year. Um, you know, and the, the situation was a little bit different. Their coaching situation was different. But I, I think we could see Josh Allen start maybe in the middle of the season, depending on the Bills' record. It's a, it's a lot to work out and sort out. Uh, I think you have three sure. fairly good options that you're not quite sure which one is going to pan out yet. So um, right. you're going you're to have the whole season to work that out. The preseason's not going to get that done. It's just not. No, no. Yeah, no. You're right. I, I agree. I think that uh, the preseason's not going to work it out, but they got to see what Nate's got because. That Chargers game was abysmal. It was a disaster. It was a snowball effect game. Um, but then there are moments in other games when he relieved Tyrod Taylor against the Saints. He played pretty well. When he when he played in the snow game against the Colts, for it being you know what was it looked like twelve inches of snow on the field, he played pretty well considering. Um, so there's a lot to kind of iron out. But I think they're avoiding putting Josh Allen out there on an island by himself with their offensive line kind of. In a, in a state of transition. Not in a state of disarray, state of transition. No doubt, but most fans don't want to hear that. He's the shiny new toy. They want to see him. They're buying the jerseys just like you. Right. I want to see I want to see him play. If it were me, I'd put him out there right away. I want to I don't I don't believe in oh this rookie's got to learn and hold a clipboard. It's 2018 rookies play and and hey, you know, they, they of, usually play well. If you again, it, uh, I mentioned last podcast, but if you watch that Hard Knock series following the Cleveland Browns, I got the articles up on the first two episodes right now. Third one coming right. soon. Yeah, those but, are very well done, by the way, too. Appreciate that. I mean, I love that series. Anything un, uncensored <laughs> that I love. Uh, but Baker Mayfield is surprising me, y'all. He is looking sharp. Yes. Had a first sharp pre preseason game and looks to be playing the part as far as off the field stuff as well. You just have to watch the series to right. see what I mean. But uh, I'm surprised. I'm pleasantly surprised by Baker Mayfield. Uh, although I think your boy Tyrod should still be this starter there because of what he's shown as well. But I'm um, lacking what I'm seeing out of Baker Mayfield too. Uh, but Dan, what do you think about the quarterback situation in Buffalo before we move on and start talking about some rankings and other things? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put Josh Allen uh, out there on the field as a rookie at all. I mean, I, he was my number one quarterback in the NFL draft. I think he has a lot of promise, um, but he's not ready. He's raw. He's, he's still a raw quarterback. He could use a year just to sit back and learn and take in an NFL system um, and, and just work on some technique things that he needs, like footwork. Uh, his footwork still is is not where it needs to be. Um, progressions, things like that. So I wouldn't rush them out there. The Bills aren't going anywhere quick. Um, they, they they have to build up to this. So you have money invested into AJ McCarron, and you, you have Nate Peterman there. If you, if you know if he looks good enough, have those two guys take the the majority of the hits. Uh, Ryan said that the Bills' offensive line is is you know in a rebuilding. <laughs> It, they're terrible. They, they have a terrible offensive line. No, they're bad. Um, so yeah. I would yeah. not put Josh Allen out there. Um, and uh, like he said, five of the first six on the road, and it's against some good defenses. I think Jacksonville is part of that, uh, maybe even a Seattle. I'd, there, there's some good teams that they play within that first uh, those first week. So I wouldn't just let them learn, let them sit back and, and, and take in an NFL season without being uh, thrown out to the Wolves. Yeah. yeah, not week one. Not week one. Not week one. Yeah, like I said, I think you kind of have to let that play out. 
Um, so you guys mentioned the offensive line discrepancies uh, and deficiencies, rather, for Buffalo. Um, but I just said on the last podcast that the Miami Dolphins are going to finish last in the AFC East. Uh, Dan disagreed. He, I, you have Buffalo. You seriously have Buffalo finishing last? You Buffalo think? or the Jets. So yeah, I think they're going to be uh, the bottom feeders of the division. So you think Miami's going to be number two? Yeah. You got more confidence in them from somewhere than I do. I don't know where it's yeah, going. Well, from. I, I like Tannehill. I think he's a he's a top fifteen type quarterback. I mean, he he's gotten them in the playoffs before. He can he can do it. He did get hurt, uh, so he wasn't even able to play in the playoff game. But he can definitely lead that offense. I like Drake. I like their weapons on the outside. Um, when you look at Devontae Parker, Kenny Stills, they added Amendola, Albert Wilson, uh, Mike Gesicki, the rookie tight end, uh, is going to turn some heads this year uh and their defense is actually pretty solid um Raquan McMillan is a big guy to watch for he lost his rookie season last year um, but he had over 100 tackles in all four years at Ohio State he's going to be a monster in the middle um so I like what the Dolphins are doing quietly they're not they're not making any any moves but uh I like how they're building their team yeah, the only reason they were even in and won a few games last year is because of that defense. They were just in straight up dog fights. Um, but I gotta, I gotta think you could, you disagree with that though, right, Ryan? I mean, your Buffalo Bills made the yeah. playoffs this past year. They're not well, gonna fall from playoff to they lost a lot. They lost a lot. They lost. They lost Incognito, who lost his mind. So if anything, that was a win. Uh, Eric Wood, I was never really high on, to be quite honest, uh, as far as a player in the locker room, great guy, all that stuff. But I wouldn't say he was, uh, he was due. This was probably his last year. Maybe next year would have been his last year. It kind of sucked. It was unfortunate the way he went out. But, um, I think Buffalo's defense is better on paper and on the field this year than it was last year. They got Harrison Phillips, who was a stud at Stanford. Trey Edmonds is a linebacker that Dan knows a lot about. He rated him as the number one, as did I. Uh, Trey White should have been the defensive rookie of the year last year, in my opinion. You put pro football focus stuff up, it's they are, they are in love with Trey White. Uh, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer. The real question, I think, is the loss of E.J. Gaines. They lost E.J. Gaines. He, he kind of missed some games last year. They weren't willing to re-sign him. They signed Vontae Davis, who is is not ej Gaines. uh in the games that ej Gaines was in the bills went six and one last year so that's something to keep our eye on but um i like buffalo's defense a lot better than miami's to be quite honest there you go so let's talk about these rankings a little bit if you have not checked out the guide i recommend you go to my fantasy sports talk.com especially if you haven't drafted and purchased this guide because there's so much 80 pages uh, and I'm going to go through the table of contents here, just w- exactly what's in this guide. Even if you have drafted and have not yet purchased the guide, I recommend you do because there's still a lot of great knowledge for you. Uh, even going in the future, maybe making some preseason trades or, or whatever. But the proceeds go to the Wounded Warrior Project and Susan G. Komen Foundation. So it's just a great cost for just a dollar. Um, and then Dan also put a pretty picture of Josh Gordon on the front of the cover as well. Uh, so that's where the dollar right there. Um, but we, we go through it all. We got quarterback rankings, running back ranking, rankings, wide receiver rankings, tight end rankings, and then you have the strength of schedules of all those positions. You have rookie rankings, the running back handcuffs, which uh, we've talked about with Ryan actually on this uh, show a couple of times. Breakout or bust segment, bold predictions, draft day tips, which I will be reading that several times between now and Sunday. You also have your defensive and kicker rankings if you're so inclined, if you really care. Uh, and basically basically all the uh, NFL team previews done by all of our writers here at MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Um, so that is great information there. That's a big chunk of our fantasy guide, so check that out too. Um, you go through the bye week, see who those are, sleepers, later round draft targets, um, and um, and uh, there's a, actually a buyer beware segment <laughs> that Dan threw in there, and it, it is for Ryan's LaShawn McCoy. So, uh, and that was right. even before the latest uh, legal situation, right, Dan? Yeah, yeah, that was before uh, he wanted to throw a hit down on on his old lady. So um, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Um, I saw something this week on that. I think either her family's lawyer is suing uh, LaShawn yeah, McCoy. She's, she's suing McCoy for, I mean, it sounds like a kind of stupid lawsuit. Uh, 
I, 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 I'm not legal enough to understand it, but it seemed like a little ridiculous. But, hey, Zeke got suspended six games for it. No charges, no evidence, text messages saying, I'm doing this for money, and he got suspended six games. It's similar evidence from what I've seen right now from McCoy. So unless it's Roger Goodell going after the Cowboys and Jerry Jones, McCoy should see a similar, a similar fate in my mind. You have a thought on that, <laughs> Ryan? I mean, well, are, you, are you even considering touching well, LaShawn McCoy? Say you have the 11th pick in the draft Sunday night. Are you touching LaShawn McCoy? No, no, I'm not touching him. Um, he's on the wrong side of 30. Uh, I talked about, you know, I, I like to play a little sarcastic twist on things sometimes, but I know as well as anybody, I was right there at the training camp. Buffalo's offensive line is not uh, what it was last year. Um they have some rookies that they're putting in. Wyatt Teller did some decent things, but they're in a state of uh, disarray slash transition, you know, and uh, I'm not going to use a first, second, or third on the Sean McCoy uh, as long as I know that he's on the wrong side of 30 and as long as I know that that offensive line is not what it once was. I think that's the key to it right there. Um, different day there. In not, even, not even talking about the legal stuff because I actually think that that, you know, it, it – Time will tell, but um, I, I'm not even I'm not even taking the legal stuff into the into the uh, equation. I'm not even putting that into the equation. I'm just looking at it from a X's and O standpoint. Okay, so let's jump into some fantasy stuff and break down some of these lists and rankings. So I encourage you all to definitely check out the guide. Buy the guide for a dollar, download it, and check it out. Um, you can have it in a matter of 15 seconds from right now. If you go, uh, but so the first thing I want to do is break down not Dan's rankings of the quarterbacks themselves, but an, a separate article that's on the website right now. As we're giving you a little sneak peek of the guide, is the quarterback strength of schedules, and number one, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Blake Bortles, according to Dan, has the easiest strength of schedules for a quarterback, even though his name is Blake Bortles. He trash, Dan. He trash. Uh, so wh- <laughs> where did this come from, Dan? Uh, well, I mean, this this isn't just me doing this. I mean, this is actual data based on the, the schedules. So, I mean, this is this is uh, uh, a formula that was actually made on, on strength of schedule. It can be found uh, uh, one of the websites I write for, Fantasy Pros. They do a great job um, on all of their stuff and, and uh, this where they, they formulated this formula for me. So They must um, think the AFC South is going to suck. Well, their their competition is going to you know, to be a little rough, and obviously, I think in the first few, the first top ten, you have multiple. Who's uh, the NFC uh, division they're matched up against this year? That may tell a lot too. Yeah, it, it, it will tell a lot. I don't know offhand who it is, but uh, you know, Jaguars and Blake Bortles being number one in strength of schedule doesn't mean go out and select Blake Bortles as your starting quarterback or anything <laughs> like that. It's but the just- way I would look at it is so Blake Bortles and the Jaguars have the easiest strength of schedule for quarterbacks. When you go down and you see the Rams at 27th and Jared Goff, uh, I'm not high on Jared Goff this year. That would be where I would compare those two players and, you know, towards the end of your, your draft and say, which guy am I going to get? Um, Why are you I not high have, on Goff? you think it's because he lost his, uh, his offensive coordinator? I, that's one. I think the NFL is going to crack down on McVay getting in his head, uh, literally walking up to the line of scrimmage, audibling, audibling him and telling him where to go. Uh, the NFL isn't going to be <laughs> allowing that anymore. Uh, the defenses, they just have another year of film on them. I just, uh, McVay's system is successful, but just like when he was in Washington, uh, that second year, it's not as good. So he had this, this first, this, this season, uh, McVay's first season of, you know, unbelievable, uh, production, um, but I don't think that's going to be reciprocated the same way. I, the Rams are still going to be good. They're going to be led by that amazing defense, and they're going to probably shut down a lot of teams, so they're not going to have to pass a lot. Um, and I just think Goff, we saw him as a rookie. He obviously made a step forward, but I don't think it's going to be a continual progression up. Uh, Jared Goff is nothing more than a game manager. He's a lower-level Alex Smith in my mind uh, as his career stretches out. So Listen, Brandon, you you watched Hard Knocks with the Rams a few years ago. You know uh, 
uh, the type of player that Goff was then. Obviously, he's progressed, but still. I was so there's... shocked last year. I mean, last year was such, like, what the hell am I seeing? Yeah, but I think that was more McVay than actually Goff doing it, and I think teams are going to start to to figure that out a little bit more. Well, I would have to agree. The answer to the question of who the NFC division is that the Jags will play this year is your own NFC East, Dan. They start actually their first uh, inter interleague, I guess you would say, or conference game is against your Dallas Cowboys at Dallas October 14th. But um, That's a W for the Cowboys. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know, man. I don't know where this initially strength of schedule is, comes from. So they start out at New York. Okay, well, I kind of see that. I mean, the Browns just beat them in a preseason game, so New York may be struggling again this year. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. But second game is against New England, and then they play uh, their first conference game, starts out with the Tennessee Titans. Um, so I, I don't know. I think the a- NFC East is going to be pretty damn decent. I mean, you got the defending champs there, Philadelphia Eagles, who's going to be stacked again. They got Cowboy Dan's Cowboys, um, and then the, the Redskins um, in there as well. And um, who knows what they're going to be? Uh, but I don't think that's the worst conference you can pick on if you're talking about. Um, <laughs> the NFC division. So I don't know. I don't think this is initially a horrible schedule. So they must be really down on the AFC South. That lets me know a little bit. That's why these rankings are so important, I guess. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, the, just kind of go through the top 10 real quick. Ro- Washington Redskins are number two, supposedly. So they have the second worst strength of schedule. So Alex Smith, look out. Houston, Texas. Um, so it is, it is a theme here. I'm noticing. So check this out. Carson Wentz has the fifth easiest schedule for a quarterback this year, guys. Carson Wentz for the Philadelphia Eagles. So what I'm seeing is that the this ranking system is down on the NFC East and the AFC South because uh, number two is Alex Smith, the Washington Redskins. Number three is uh, Deshaun Watson of the Houston Texans. Number five is Philadelphia when Carson Wentz. So um, I don't know. Have you, have you had a chance to look through these quarterback rankings and how much do you uh, – schedule rankings and how much do you put into strength of schedule rankings before a draft, Brian? Uh, I look into it a little bit, but I really look into the numbers as far as where they finished last season. What's really intriguing about this year is that if you look at this ranking, you have Alex Smith at number two. Um, Kirk Cousins threw for over 4,000 yards in that offense in Washington uh, in consecutive seasons. Alex Smith, as the season ended, was a top uh, quarterback for fantasy. One of the, I believe he was top seven. Um, so that's very interesting to me. Uh, they just lost their rookie running back, the uh, Darius Geis, but they also added Paul Richardson and, and a couple other pieces here and there. That one kind of took, you know, grasped my attention because although he's 34, technically the amount of years, the couple years there where he sat behind Colin Kaepernick, Alex Smith is as fresh as a daisy, in my opinion, for a 34 year old quarterback. Um, I don't think the Redskins are going to blow the roof off the NFL or anything like that. I'm just talking from a fantasy perspective. They should be throwing a lot uh, in Washington. They should be throwing a lot. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So let's transition there. Again, check out the website. That's up on the website, myfantasysportstalk.com. I don't give away much on that. You pretty much get the gist of that to check out who the easiest quarterback schedules are. Just if if you're leaning or having a tough decision on one quarterback or another as far as when you're drafting uh, in the upcoming weeks, that might help you out a little bit and push you over the edge and and solidify your selection in your head. (laughs) Anyway, none of us never know. But uh, let's move on. We'll talk about the top 40 tight end rankings. And I love this one, Dan, because this is one of the positions I think every year could really – uh, put you over that hump as a team, or you could just be struggling like I have the last few years and just placing a new tight end in every other game. Uh, so unless you have one of those elite guys, then I'm just not sure it really matters much. But you still believe, this is Dan's tight end rankings, that Rob Gronk is the number one hands down. If he's on the field, he's number one. Yeah, I mean, he you know, he played in 14 games last year and still – had more points than the next closest tight end by double digits. So um, when he's on the field, he's the number one tight end. I mean, there's some other good ones like Kelsey and Olsen and and uh, Evan Ingram I'm high on. Uh, but I mean, when he is on the football field, it's Rob Gronkowski and it's everybody else. 
And I thought you were a little down on Greg Olson last year, but you got him sneaking into number five. A little surprise there, Dan. Yeah, well, he, and I, good thing I was down on him last year because he was terrible. He was hurt. Well, he was uh, out, yeah. Anything. Um, so that turned out well, but yeah, I'm expecting a bounce back here. He doesn't have many years left, um, but the, the Panthers, they, they've they tried to get some talent to their uh, receiving core with DJ Moore. Uh, they drafted Ian Thomas out of Indiana, another tight end uh, who has a bright future, um, but still right now, uh, Greg Olson is is Cam Newton's safety net. He's the guy that he's going to look for when he's in trouble. So um, a top five tight end status is is almost guaranteed with Greg Olson in my mind as long as he's healthy. Another guy you're extremely high on is George Kittle, which he has a, a, a quarterback now, I would say, uh, in a franchise that's going to need some offensive production from somewhere. Why not the quarterback to tight end combination in San Francisco? That's George Kittle. You got him at number six. Yeah, I have him higher than anybody else you'll find uh, anywhere. Uh, I love George Kittle this year. I'm not afraid to put him in my top ten. Most of them have him just outside the top ten. I have him as Sixth, the sixth best tight end in fantasy this year. Uh, it concerned me in the first playoff game. The Cowboys defense gave him a little whooping, and uh, he, he hurt his shoulder, but he should be back by week one. And he was able to uh, develop some chemistry with Jimmy Garoppolo last year uh, when he took over the starting quarterback duties. Um, and basically all of his production uh, came uh, with Jimmy G, and he had 43 catches for over 500 yards in that small uh, sample size. So I love Kittle's uh, ability, um, not only talent on the field, but in that system. Kyle Shanahan knows how to find receivers uh, and tight ends open, um, and I think he has the perfect quarterback there uh, to be able to get him the ball. Uh, so I'm very high on George Kittle this year. And another one real quick before we move on to Ryan and get his take on these tight ends is Jack Doyle, which I'm a little surprised on, Dan. You're very high on him as well, higher than I would ever be for an Indianapolis Colts tight end because they just don't use the position. You gave the numbers there on his breakdown over the last two years, and that, that really kind of astonished me because the Colts, do, they just never seem to be a team that used and utilized the tight end position. I mean, um, Andrew Luck had his college buddy come along with him and start in the league, Kobe Fleener, and that never even worked out. So if your college teammate and you, uh, someone you're familiar with doesn't work out, I'm, just, I'm a little skeptical of um, the Colts consistently using uh, that tight end position, and especially now that they added Eric Ebron. So I'm a little surprised that Jack Doyle, you got him number nine. Well, you look at the numbers, 174 receptions in two years. He's getting used. He, he was a top six tight end last year, um, and that was without Andrew Luck. Add Andrew Luck into the equation, I just think his numbers are going to be uh, very consistent. You have T.Y. Hilton. Other than that, you have a guy named Ryan Grant as your number two receiver. Uh, sure, there's Eric it's also the, Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's also but that was what without has Eric Ebron ever done in Detroit with Matthew Stafford throwing the ball? Nothing. If, if Andrew not, Luck comes back not, healthy, then I think – Watch out for Eric Ebron. Eric Ebron, Ebron may be more productive, should be more productive, as far as I'm concerned from a talent standpoint, than Jack Doyle. So the, the question is Andrew Luck. We'll, we'll see. But, again, I just they never seem to utilize the tight end position to me. We'll, uh, we'll find out. But that, that kind of scares me, any any Indianapolis Colt tight end being in the top ten. But, man, you, you had the numbers to back it up. Uh, Ryan, what do you think about this tight end breakdown and just tight end rankings, how you feel about it all together going into this season? Is it even a position that you're really even keying in on and when you're talking about your fantasy draft? Well, you got to definitely value it because it's a position that's in your lineup every week. You got to kind of find the, the sweet spot uh, when you're drafting and kind of like defense stuff. If you don't get to like the top three, four, five elite, then it almost doesn't matter. Right. Well, there's a, there's always a diamond out there, you know, a diamond in the rough. And I do, I, as I scroll down outside of the top 10, I look at, um, I look at Tyler Eifert. This is a guy that I think he's uber talented, uh, can be just as good when healthy as a Travis Kelsey or a Rob Gronkowski. Uh, but the guy just cannot stay healthy. Um, another guy that I think that I'm I'm high on, um, and I hate saying this because I don't want to give anything away, but David Njoku um, in Hard Knocks, you know that dude. They're, they're putting him through the ringer this year. They don't give a rats if he was a first round pick out of the U. Um, I think he can be their every- most consistent weapon on offense. I really yeah. Do. There's a there's a, even with Jarvis Landry with 
you know, depending on when Josh Gordon comes back, I think David Njoku uh, is a guy that will definitely get targets. Um, and he's a physical freak. He's a monster. Uh, and I definitely think that uh, that's a guy I'm really high on. He hasn't had any injuries as of yet. He's a fairly young player. Uh, so Njoku, I'm, I'm hoping that Eifert could have somewhat of a bounce back year. And another guy, Jordan Reed, I'd say Jordan Reed and Tyler Eifert are like the same player. They're so talented, but they just can't stay healthy. But those are three guys that I would be willing to take a chance on late uh, if they fall. So let's move on and talk about, we'll go back to the quarterbacks, because this quarterback ranking system, we talked about strength of schedules a little bit before, but we're going to talk about actual quarterback rankings. Now, the, this is not from the guide. This is our Graham Sweet, a contributor, NFL contributor um, and writer for the site, MyFantasySportsTalk.com, who contributed this list and ranks the quarterbacks. That He ranked his top 30, so check that out on the website right now, MyFantasySportsTalk.com. Um I, I like where he's going with this. I, I, it all makes sense to me. He has Aaron Rodgers, number one. I believe Aaron Rodgers is the baddest quarterback. I don't care. I, I thought he was the last three years, Tom Brady or whatever. I think Aaron Rodgers, when healthy, is the most accurate, pinpoint, precise, badass quarterback that there is in the league. Um, he has him number one. Tom Brady, number two, for obvious reasons, because he just keeps going. He's like the Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going. And Russell Wilson, number three, who can argue with that? He was right there at the top of the fantasy production for quarterbacks uh, among all fantasy players last year. Um, then he took a big step with Carson Wentz, hopefully bounce back uh, under center. I've said this before on the podcast, under center, Carson Wentz, Carson Wentz seems to have it. He seems to have that it factor and total control, like a la Tom Brady, a la Peyton Manning. Just sees it, adjust, and he executes. Um, and Drew Brees, number five. Kirk Cousins surprises me a little bit at number six. Uh, with the Vikings, um, I don't I don't see that one. Deshaun Watson, if healthy, I kind of agree they're coming in at seven. Cam Newton, eight. Jimmy G, which Dan may have this guy ranked about the same or in that neighborhood anyway at number nine, definitely in the top ten. Then Matt Ryan rounds out his top ten. Andrew Luck falls just outside that at 11. So what did you think of Graham's uh, quarterback rankings, Dan? What Anything you take uh, immediate exception to, or, or how do you feel? Yeah, I mean, we definitely disagreed on just about all of our uh, all of our rankings. Um, I mean, I have Tom Brady as my number one. Uh, I have Russell Wilson as my fifth, as opposed to his third. Um, I don't have Kirk Cousins in my top ten. I have him eleventh. Um, now it's justified. He says back to back four thousand yard seasons, but Kirk Cousins never thrown for thirty touchdowns in a career or in a season in his career. Um, he has some weapons in Minnesota, but. I see more of them as a fluke last year rather than this gaudy offense that uh, is going to be able to put up a ton of points. Even well, that, with that kind of caught up to them with Adam Thielen. You saw last year Adam Thielen the first couple of weeks put up huge numbers. The, the league kind of caught up to them and their system and their and their scheme. So, you know, first few weeks they were just uh, really going off. But yeah, I don't, I'm kind of with you. I don't see that as just a, a major you know uh, offense a juggernaut either. Yeah, so I mean, we 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 have some of the same guys. We both have Jimmy G in the top ten. He's my sixth ranked quarterback. Um, I have Deshaun Watson fourth, where he has him seventh. So um, some differences, but that's what I like about it. I like uh, the writers bringing out their own other writers bringing out their own rankings because it gives you uh, you know a comparison of of different thoughts on my fantasy sports talk of of where we we all think, and we're pretty close, but there are definitely some differences. So take it all. Look at the ones from the draft guide, the ones I published on the site, and in Grams, and, and kind of compare and contrast there, and you can kind of uh, craft your team that way. So you mentioned the few discrepancies you have, but really, honestly, you guys aren't that too far off. If you're talking about guys within the top eight or so, I think that's pretty good. Now, you mentioned Kirk Cousins. Like, I mentioned Kirk Cousins. I don't think Kirk Cousins belongs. Number six are in the top ten. To me, we'll see. I, I just don't see that. So I mean, that's one of the biggest differences you you mentioned. You know, three or four spots, I'll let that slide. But from this list, what do you see that's the most furthest apart from the way you had your quarterback rankings and the biggest discrepancy that you could tell offhand uh, if you can remember offhand. I know. So what about Jared Goff? He has him 16, yeah. Marcus Mariota 17. I mean, what's the biggest discrepancy? Um, I, have, I, have, I have Jared Goff 27th. That's pretty um, big. <laughs> That's a pretty big discrepancy then. I have um, uh, Matt Ryan. He is in his top 10. I have Matt Ryan 17th. 
Um, so that's a little bit of a discrepancy. I have Dak Prescott in my top 15. Um, so there are some some differences uh, definitely between the both of our rankings. But yeah, Jared Goff is a big one. Uh, Tyrod Taylor is another big one. He is him 29th. I have him 20th. Uh, I think he's going to do Eli Manning well. it. What about Eli Manning at 22? I have him 23. So oh, we're okay. similar there. Yeah, and that so it's not not too too crazy, but uh, you kind of get the the different ideals there. Where did you say Jared Golf was for you? Twenty seven. Yeah, so you're you're a good eleven spots off there. Ryan, from everything you've seen, how would you categorize these quarterbacks? Just from what we've talked about there in the ranking wow. list you've seen. I am a sucker for a good quarterback. It's my favorite position in the league. Uh, so fantasy football drafts, I have sometimes overdrafted, which I did last year in the uh, My Fantasy Sports Talk League. I drafted Tom Brady very high. I believe it was the second or third round. It's great to have a, a Rodgers or a Brady or you know one of the elite names, but I'm, I'm trying to look at this year who I see has the most potential to offer me more than just passing yards and touchdowns. I'm looking for quarterbacks that can move. Um, two guys that come to mind, and, and call me crazy on this, but – Two guys that are definitely going to be used often and that are going to provide a lot of points in other ways, Mitch Trubisky and Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes, the the strength of schedule, uh, uh, by that article, he's at the bottom. But I know Dan's a fan of Pat Mahomes coming out of uh, Texas Tech. I think with that offense, with Kareem Hunt, with Kelsey, with Sammy Watkins, uh, with uh, Tyreek Hill, there's a lot to gain there, and there's more room for him to grow to where he could be a guy that teams don't draft in maybe an eight or ten team league, and you could pick him up and ride him the rest of the season. There you go. Just a thought. Yeah, I mean, it's very good points. So just kind of thinking outside the box, and that quarterback position is one you technically could go undrafted and then maybe pick up one of the guys that wasn't drafted. Because honestly, in a fourteen-man league, I'm not sh- in our league. I'm not sure that Patrick Mahomes is going to get drafted. I mean, what do you you think? That's a right. for surefire thing. I think. I don't I think so. I think, I think he would. I think he would. I think he would late, uh, like ninth, tenth round, which I think would be an absolute steal um, for someone that gets him. But you know, like Mitch Trubisky too. I talked about him. He he's got added weapons. They got Allen Robinson. Uh, they have Anthony Tariq Cohen, Miller, Jordan Howard, and Anthony Miller. Right. So I, I, my thing is honest. Heading into this season, more than any other year, I could honestly say I'm going to try to buy low and just let it. Let it flow. I mean, last year I started Josh McCown over Matt Ryan uh, multiple times, and it was never wrong. There were weeks where you just play the matchups, obviously, and Josh McCown would have some bigger weeks due to the matchup in comparison to Matt Ryan. So, you know, got to ride those matchups. You never know. There's going to be talent left out there undrafted because there's been several years in the last several years that Eli Manning has gone undrafted in some leagues. I mean, other guys like right. Andy Dalton, which I may have got crap about that last year, but uh, I mean, still, there's quality stuff out there that's going to be left undrafted because no one wants to buy into two quarterbacks during their initial draft. So there's going to be some guys out there. So uh, buy low, let it flow from below. That's Ryan Thomas. <laughs> That's a nice quote. Yeah, buy low from below. That was a nice quote. Buy low, <laughs> let it flow from below. There you go. Uh, so let's move on. We'll talk about some running back rankings before we end this one. Again, we're just kind of giving you a whirlwind tour of myfantasysportstalk.com right now. We're not going to give you everything because we can't. There's so much fantasy stuff out there right now on the website. I uh, just can't possibly tell you everything in this podcast. So, uh, But this article is the running back rankings from Graham Sweet. One I know you're going to take immediate exception to, Dan, is that he has David Johnson number six. I know you don't like that or agree with that at all. Graham, you're fired. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, that happened. It's it's wrong. Don't listen to his rankings on this one. David Johnson will be the number one uh, running back in fantasy. It's just it's going to happen. Uh, he's going to have a thousand yards rushing, thousand yards receiving. He's going to be the Cardinals' offense. Uh, so draft with confidence. And then to add further insult to injury and rub it in your face a little bit further, Dan, he has a guy you're not high on, really, not top five high on, Le'Veon Bell. 
Yeah, he's my sixth ranked running back. Just way too many questions. Yeah, when he's on the field, he's great, uh, but he's holding out. You know, he or well, he did what he did, and he he always has some type of injury issues. He's a puff away from uh, from a suspension. Um, he, he likes to to focus more on his rap career. Sometimes there's just too many questions, and uh, a decline is due. It's just. For him, for Antonio Brown, for Roethlisberger, the whole Steelers team is every year I predict a decline. Well, this year it, it, it's going to so happen. It's Pittsburgh for you. It's New England for me. I, I got you. We're, we're neither one or really right yet. Pittsburgh was pretty close last year. They were in the thick of the hunt. So, um, But his number two is Todd Gurley, which you're also – you fell back down on, which I was surprised by, because he carried you to fantasy glory last year in large part, Todd Gurley, but you're saying not so fast for this year. Yeah, I mean, I still have Todd Gurley as a top five back. He's my fourth overall running back. You just do not see back-to-back number one running back seasons. It hasn't been done since 2007 when Lindaney and Tomlinson went off. It just doesn't happen um, back-to-back number ones. He's still going to be a great uh you know, a great back to own, surefire first-round pick, surefire top-five pick. Um, but he's just not going to be the number one overall pick. It just doesn't happen like that. Um, so I'm still high on him, but he's he shouldn't be the first overall. So, Ryan, your boy yes. here, this may be a little high. I don't know. You tell me. But LaShawn McCoy comes in at 16. Um, I would rank him inside the, the more 18 to 20 range. Well, it's pretty uh, close then, so you still think he has enough of, uh, suspension yeah, it, looming regardless to be a top 20 fantasy producing well, suspension producing suspension looming i'm not taking any i'm not taking any chances on a dude with with a suspension no matter who it is it could not be at all not at all gail sayers you and, did and last year didn't him. you didn't you did last year right, right. not doing it again nope Nope, I learned my lesson. This is this is learning, Ryan. Not not past 2017, Ryan. This is learning, Ryan. Ryan does learn, believe it or not. And one guy that I I wrote this article a couple a couple weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, and maybe I was a little bit bullish on Alvin Kamara, but this guy literally was my kryptonite. No matter when I played him, no matter what matchup he was in. He averaged in a PPR league twenty-five to thirty points. I think Alvin Kamara has got to be ranked in the top top three, top four with David Johnson, Zeke Elliott, and uh, Todd Gurley. He's it's that's that's my top four. That's how it's got to be. That's I can't I can't not give Kamara that props for the year that he had last year, and it wasn't even a full season. So, good transition there. We'll go ahead and mention that he does have Alvin Kamara, number five. So, he does, uh, Graham does have him in at the top five. Um, And what I was looking for uh, a little bit earlier is to see just how far he has his sidekick, Mark Ingram. We don't even know how that's exactly going to work out yet. We think Alvin Kamara is the future, but uh, he had Mark Ingram way down at 30. Is is that representable? I mean, do you think Alvin Kamara is, is going to be that much more fantasy value than Mark Ingram? Can anyone truly say that at this point? I don't think well, Mark can Ingram's going for the first four games. Oh, that, that makes a big impact. Well, I mean, that hurts, but I mean, to have a guy like LaShawn McCoy in there at number six who could be facing suspension as well. Um, I mean, the, the truth is when Mark Ingram is is in the lineup, we don't know who the one and two is exactly. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I'd say that with Ingram's suspension being four games, that's, you know, that's a, 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 a substantial suspension. Um, and I think Alvin Kamara is going to really uh, take off the training wheels. I think last season was the the tip of the iceberg for this dude. I, I and, I, and it sounds – I'm not openly high on a player this early in his career, but I see a lot of Todd Gurley. I see a lot of uh, David Johnson in Alvin Kamara. So – so the top ranked rookie, and we have actually a couple of uh, two year guys in here with uh, making uh, Graham's list with Leonard Fournette. Um, well, actually, several of them. Uh, Leonard Fournette. The th- uh, there's actually three of them in a row. Leonard Fournette, Kareem Hunt, and Christian McCaffrey, all two year guys, sophomore season guys, ranked in the top ten of Graham's list. But what I was going to mention is the first rookie in the list is number seven, Saquon Barkley, New York Giants. 
Um, is he going to get that much work done to be I – mean, is he going to get enough pressure relieved off of him to get enough successful work in to really produce at a high fantasy level? Oh, yeah. I have Barkley as my fifth running back. I have him ahead of uh, Le'Veon Bell. Um, I think he's going to finish above him. He's he's not only going to get the workload, he's going to impact it running and receiving, but he's not going to be able to be focused on because you have Odell Beckham, because you have Evan Ingram, because you have Sterling Shepard. Uh, you have all these weapons uh, on the Giants offense um, that, yeah, I think definitely, Barkley, you're going to see a similar year to Zeke Elliott put up in, as, as a rookie with Dallas. Um, the only difference is the Giants' offensive line. While improving, I love the signing of Nate Solder uh, in the drafting of Will Hernandez. It's still not you know, up to par comparative to the Cowboys. It's definitely improved. Their offensive line uh, looked like Ben McAdoo was the left guard last year. Um, well, was he? <laughs> that may be part of the problem. Was he? And he was wearing a fanny pack trying to block the defensive tackle. And uh, so, yeah, yeah I mean, the, the same I, thing about the Rams didn't make that much, that many moves on the offensive line from two years ago to last year. Uh, sometimes it's just a personnel change and it's a scheme change. So uh, we'll see. I just, I guess that's how down I was on Ben McAdoo. I think he just flipped that franchise upside down on its head and they stayed there. There was one guy of interest to me that he ranked, and I thought it was Melvin Gordon. Didn't he rank him a little high? Yeah, Melvin Gordon is ranked in the top uh, five. Uh, he's number right. four. Yeah, so number the four. Chargers. That yeah. interests me because I have him in a keeper league, and there were some weeks where he did very well, and then there were some weeks where he did so so. Um, I, I don't I remember where he finished last league, year, but I'm thinking it was top five last year. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was top five. right. Yeah, very consistent. Yeah, yeah. He was. He was. He would put up like fifteen to twenty. You know, usually, which is which is good. I mean, that's Pretty that's good. fantastic. But but when a guy like, like I hate to beat the dead horse, but Alvin Kamara was putting up twenty at least. I mean, show the man I, some respect I, here. That may have been more of shock factor too. <laughs> I mean, because in a rookie right. season, anytime times the backup comes back and a passing team, you ain't paying much attention to him. Let's be honest. That's going to be changed right. this year. Yeah. That's that's fair. I mean, everybody, the bullseye is on his back, but just his running ability with the ball, his movement, the the, the moves that he he's, has, he's, his repertoire. He's got the skill set. Yep. He's dynamic. Yeah, he's very dynamic. So, um, but I thought his ranking was pretty good. You know, Shady McCoy suspension or not, I, I'm a little bit leery. I think that's the one guy out of all the running backs that could go one way or the other, and I don't like that. I don't like crowded backfields or a guy that could go one way or the other. I want to know what I'm getting with my fantasy running backs. Yep. Buy low, let it flow from below. Yep. Not buying low on running backs, though. Maybe. We'll see. And you got to know what you're going to get. Right. That's the famous, famous quote. So good luck to you, sir, in Sunday's fantasy draft you need a championship to um we're gonna revoke your ticket to the show honestly we're gonna revoke your ticket to the show i need one for the first that first year i I thought i was gonna make the finals and i it didn't have i think the finals appearance is good i mean i'm a buffalo bills fan for for crying out loud so finals appearance is is good enough for me but to get knocked out on a 10 and 4 record first round of the playoffs no that was not a good a – good, that was a very tough pill to swallow, Brandon. Well, we're just letting you know we're doing ESPN-style cuts uh, coming up in January. So you, Orlando Torres, uh, DDT, all y'all are on notice. So better perform or else it's getting the axe in January. I, I think DDT went into hiding once he saw that Aaron Judge got hurt. <laughs> I don't know. The, the penitentiary is putting it on me right now. Uh, again, though, I mean, maybe in last podcast, but uh, uh, DDT's had the two best first days of a, uh, a week in the, in the fantasy history right now. Uh, so, wow. yeah, he's, he's got he put up like 200 points in the first two days. So, I mean, whatever he's doing, no, 300. Yeah, yeah, like 300 in the first two days. So, whatever he's doing, he needs to slow down, but I, I'm not giving up yet. Fantasy baseball playoffs winding up. NFL fantasy drafts coming soon to a keyboard or desktop or phone near you. Uh, so check out all these rankings and all this good stuff on myfantasysportstalk.com. Would be my advice to all the peeps at home, Dan. 
Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, constantly going to be updating. I'm actually going to be doing uh, weekly fantasy rankings throughout the uh, NFL season with my fantasy sports talk and fantasy pros um, as part of the expert uh, consensus panel. Um, so you're going to be able to rank or, you know, my rankings are going to be judged analytically against the other experts, some guys like uh, Matthew Barry, um, Andy Barons uh, of Yahoo Sports, who is also the the head of the Fantasy Sports Writers Association, which I'm a part of. But all the top guys are, are doing this this year, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, but that'll also uh, bring out stuff for my Fantasy Sports Talk. Every week I'm going to be ranking every single position, you know, top 50 guys uh, by position by week. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. So any fantasy uh, and, you know knowledge or anything that you might need uh, leading up to your draft or through the season, definitely check out MyFantasySportsTalk.com because we're going to have it all covered. And I think the collaborative collaborative effort with you and Fantasy Pros, that was uh, prevalent in, I think, the IDP article and the tight end article this week, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, great software that they are letting us use uh, in order to put out our rankings to our um, to our fans, to our readers, um, you know, with with what they're uh, helping us deliver. It's great. There you go. All that is on the website right now. As we mentioned a couple of times, Hard Knock Series, if you're interested in that, I am um, publishing uh, reviews uh, of each episode as they come up. That runs through September 4th, so we got um, was it three more three more weeks of that. Um, I can't believe it's almost here, but uh, so check that out on the website as well. So all that going on, myfantasysportstalk.com. Definitely your stop for fantasy prep. Why go anywhere else? Thanks for watching another episode of My Fantasy Podcast. Thanks for Ryan Thomas of the Thomas Take Podcast for joining us and dropping knowledge from below uh, all the way down here in the My Fantasy Podcast world. So appreciate that. And for my co-host, Dan Shark, I'm Brandon Reed. Until next time, we'll talk more fantasy football, folks. Later. Peace.